Chris, are you live streaming this? What's, what's going on here? We've got to figure yeah. this out. We've got to get this. <laughs> We have to get this like down to a science. In this video, we're gonna talk about live streaming a Twitter space. We're gonna talk about repurposing the content that we do by making that live stream. And then we're even gonna cover the software and just a couple cool little features that have to do with OBS and StreamYard. Here we go. All right, so check this out. I'm gonna walk you through what I did last night. I was uh, I was in a room with Altmom and she had me answer a couple little questions. I'm gonna play something really quick from my MacBook. Like down to a science because it's gonna get real out here real soon. Yeah, so what I've actually got going is I'm live streaming the room itself visually so we can see the same thing that I'm looking at on my phone, but it's layered on top of me on video and so the idea is that as we're having these conversations, Altmom, Gina, all the homies would actually be on video and all of the conversation from the Twitter space would be pumping into that live stream. So you'd hear everybody, you'd see everybody. It just kind of gives a different conversation to all of this stuff because if there's people that are watching that live stream, they can be having a conversation in chat and you can actually see the people and hear the people in that Twitter space. I hope some of that made sense. I'm taking that video, I'm gonna download it and I'm gonna chop it up. So that would be what people consider your pillar content. I'm gonna take that pillar content, chop it up into little pieces and I can rearrange it in the edit so that it fits perfect on vertical video, whatever I want, all right? So I'm just gonna go back to the MacBook. I am going to download this and when I do, it's gonna give me a couple options. So I can download just the video or I can download just the audio. So I didn't catch this until I was doing the edit. I actually had on two different audio sources for my mic, which is why I sound like a transformer. In any case, one of the options that there is below, it says individual audio, audio recordings, individual audio recordings. Wow, it's hard to say. Um, what this means is if I've got five different guests on this live stream, the beautiful thing is, um, let's say that there's a car drives past in the background of one of them. Somebody's out on the street, they're using their phone for the live stream and all of us have to hear that stupid car drive past on the live stream. Well, in the recording, because I have individual audio tracks for each person, I could actually just mute that person's audio track right then so that it's not where I'm stuck with just a single layer of audio of everybody on stage. So if somebody coughs or somebody farts or somebody does something stupid or a kid's crying in the background or a door slams, any of that stuff, as long as it's not from the person who's speaking in that moment, then we can eliminate that in post. So this is just dope because you can have a lot of chaos when there's this many people on stage, but at the end of the day, the only two tracks that uh, I can't really mess with are the person who might be speaking while a car drives past or my track where it's got the audio pumping into the Twitter space because my audio is the one that like, it has to be the one that's treated the most delicately. I'm in a little podcast room here. So usually that's not a problem unless my kid comes out and says, dad, blah, 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 play Minecraft. Uh, okay. Let's go back to the video. Just keep in mind, I didn't catch the thing about the transformer voice until after I had recorded and I don't want to reshoot it. So let's go. I will be able to use the audio for something like a podcast. I'll be able to use the audio and the video individually on my editing program, Final Cut Pro. I have full control of everything. Why am I telling you this? Because Twitter spaces is awesome, but people just sit there and they talk all day long. And then after that's done, whatever information that they were talking about just kind of goes poof because nobody goes back and listens to old Twitter spaces. It's just kind of a thing. The only time I've ever interacted with Twitter spaces in that way is when I'm downloading something so that I could chop it up to use for social media. So your average person, your consumer, not using it. And then meanwhile, what I want to show you on here, this is actually my desktop. So this is OBS. And what I'm able to do, I could start changing the scenes based on if I want my main camera, spaces, that's a completely different view. So this is Twitter spaces here. And basically all that it's doing is it's got the room that's happening and then it's got me. This is also where we would be seeing multiple other people depending on my layout. Um, so if I go to another video that I recorded with a bunch of people, let's see the Bulls and Apes team here. Um, here is officially. a whole bunch of so, people, right? So we've got five people on screen. Now imagine if Twitter spaces was on there as well. This is kind of 
it's hard to, to break down without fully geeking out and like scaring people off. But imagine this, you have a Twitter space, somebody comes in, they're hosting the whole thing for you. You do nothing different than you would normally ever do, except when you turn on your phone and you start talking to it like normal, you've also got a camera that's pointed at you and it doesn't have a mic, it doesn't have anything. It's literally just the video component that's being pumped into a live stream. And then multiple other people are there just like here in this space. All these people just showed up and I took care of everything. The reason that this is important is because you can have your regular Twitter spaces running. If people want to have a deeper experience when your tonality changes, they can actually see it as well. This just adds a completely different layer to a bunch of people who don't really know each other, but they're spending hours and hours every day talking to each other on these Twitter spaces. And a lot of them hide behind weird PFPs, which we can integrate PFPs into this as well. That's not for this video. Just kind of want to get you uh, to be able to wrap your head around a little bit what value that might be for interviews, for having the whole chat happening on YouTube or on Twitch or wherever this thing is being pumped out because it can be going to like five or six different live stream locations all at once. So that means YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, there's a bunch of them. Uh, in any case, the fact that we've got all of this stuff that's going out as opposed to just a normal Twitter space and it requires nothing extra of the people involved besides the producer, which is me, which my job is ridiculous. So don't worry about that side of things unless you wanna know because you wanna be a producer. Then I'll tell you, then I'll walk you through it. But in this case, I just wanted to share uh, I think that's enough. I hope I didn't explode your brain and uh, let's definitely talk about this more and set up some live streams.